Let's talk your analysis really quick. Your analysis is going to be done on many patients, okay? There's a lot of reasons we want to run a urinalysis, and I just want to talk about some of the results that you're going to see and what you would expect, okay? So we're going to talk about five of the results you're going to see in a urinalysis. We're going to talk about what the normal value is and then what uh, the indication would be for an abnormal value with one of these. First of all, one of the things you're going to see in your urinalysis is protein. You want protein to be zero there or just to trace amounts. The indication if you start having protein in there is glomerular permeability or infection. So what could happen here is our glomerulus becomes more permeable, allowing protein to escape. And that would uh, could also indicate that there may be an infection. So we normally want our protein to be zero to trace. If we start seeing protein, we're looking at possible permeability of glomerulus or infection. We also will look at our RBCs when we get our urinalysis. We want that to be zero to two. We want very little RBCs in our, in our urine. If we start to see some, and it could indicate bleeding or urinary tract malignancy. So if we have so much blood, you know, that we're losing blood in our urine, that's a concern that we may have internal bleeding or there might be bleeding issues somewhere within the patient. Another value is WBCs. We want our urine to be negative for WBCs. If we start to see WBCs in our urine, things that we're going to be looking out for are going to be sepsis, pneumonia, or UTI. Okay, so once we start seeing WBCs exiting being in our urine, that's a good indication that we may have a severe infection or UTI. We also are going to look at glucose. Okay, glucose should be negative in our urine. We don't want glucose in our urine. If the patient has uh, glucose in the urine, that's a sign of diabetes mellitus. Okay, and you might, you might even smell the urine is going to smell sweeter. Okay, so those that's protein, RBCs, WBCs, and glucose. Another number we're going to look at is urine-specific gravity. Normal value for urine-specific gravity is a range. It's 1.003 to 1.03. And what this is really going to tell us is, is really kind of the concentration of our urine. Our water has a specific gravity of 1, okay? As our urine becomes more concentrate, our urine-specific gravity value goes up as well. As our urine becomes more dilute... In, in, in situations like diabetes insipidus, then we're going to see our urine-specific gravity approaching uh, one. And the, the concern with that is if we're dumping all this fluid, our sodium, serum sodium levels are going to go up quite a bit. Okay, we're dumping just plain fluid in situations like diabetes insipidus. Sodium's going to rise up really high, and that uh, puts the patient at risk for neurological issues, you know, like seizure and things like that. If our urine-specific gravity begins to go really, really high, that could be uh, a sign of the patient being very dehydrated or a syndrome of inappropriate ADH. So in, in symptoms like syndrome of inappropriate ADH, the patient is retaining the fluid, and so the, the urine is becoming much more concentrate. And we're going to see that number approach and go above the 1.03 meaning that the, the urine is incredibly concentrate. There's no fluid in there. It's really becoming more and more and more concentrate. All right, so your analysis is an important lab to look at. The ones we talked about today are protein, RBCs, WBCs, glucose, and urine-specific gravity.